So Professor Benjamin Okaba joins me now from Bayesa to review some of the stories on the radar today, uh, starting with uh, the president's uh, address and the occasion of Nigeria's 61st independence anniversary. Professor Okaba, thank you very much for joining me from uh, Yenagua. First, Nigeria at 61. Uh, what does it mean to you? What are the big issues, in your view, about how Nigeria has fared? Is the country in a position of strength or in a position of weakness? Uh, thank you very much uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Uh, yes, 60, 61 years uh, ordinarily uh, in the life of a nation, in the life of an individual, calls for celebration uh, in terms of growth, in terms of development, in terms of surmounting the major fundamental issues of sustainable development. Uh, particularly in a country that is enormously blessed with natural resources and uh, a history of mutual coexistence. Uh, yes, in reality, uh, it seems the opposite is what we have, as uh, many Nigerians are disillusioned, uh, frustrated, angered, hopeless and uh, so placing this paripasu the address of the of mr president uh, uh, so many persons who read and listened to the address got more confused uh, confused uh, first uh, it was difficult to know whether it was uh, a showcase of dishonesty uh, or that there is a disconnect between the leadership and the people. I say so because uh, three of the major issues the president tried to address, uh, uh, namely uh, the issue of uh, food security uh, and uh, alluding to the fact that uh, there's a uh, hike in food prices as a result of the activities of middlemen. Uh, uh, is, is unbelievable uh, because we all know that farmers have been chased out of their farmlands by the activities of bandits and espen who of recent have developed a strange uh, audacity to prosecute their trade at all costs, including jeopardizing the sources of livelihood of fellow Nigerians. Uh, we have in the entire northeast, northwest, several places, even part of the south south, and uh, some pockets of cases in the in the south south, where where farmers have been thrown out of their farmlands. So if the farmlands, or if the farmers don't have access to their farmlands, that means the food that we are available will be very little or there will be scarcity. And if there is scarcity, the food prices must obey the natural economic law of demand and supply. So we have so much mouth pursuing very little. And that is the reason for the scarcity of, price of food. That is the reason for the height of food prices. Now, number two, I also said uh, that uh, the war against uh, insurgency uh, is being taken to the homes of the insurgents. And that also is not a reflection of the reality on ground. On a daily basis, particularly in the past 18 months, we have seen that the insurgents uh, that were supposedly declared to have been defeated uh, are the ones actually defeating us the more, more superior the visit or the attack to the NDA, uh, NDA headquarters the daily or weekly killing of even military personnel uh, are we talking about military attacks in uh, Anambra state are we talking about uh, daily sacking of villages in several parts of, of, uh, of Nigeria particularly in Benue and Plateau so, 
on a daily basis, we realize that the war against insurgency is abysmally failing. Now, on the third issue of the mode of Nigerians, that uh, Nigerians are happy. Nigerians are not happy, that is the truth. The John nation is not happy because, because uh, our expectations have been dashed. Uh, we expected an address from Mr. President that will look at the issues of the contentious issues of the PIA and the demand of the John nation for a minimum 5%. We have also, we also expected the Mr. President to address those issues that border on, on equity, justice, justice, equity, particularly resource justice. And the call by all sectors in this country, all segments in this country, all ethnic nationalities, except a few, and particularly those who are benefiting from the system. That's, this nation is standing on, on a jauntized, jaundiced structure. And that structure must be broken off and we need to restructure this country. We need to return this country to its former status as the giant of Africa in wars and in this. We have all the resources. It is, it is gladdening that Mr. President himself acknowledged the fact that we are facing challenges. In fact, we are not, the challenges are so enormous. Yes. But in terms of what are the practical solutions to these challenges, we're not contained in the Mr. President's address. And that is why Nigerians who felt that maybe haven't gone through the normal ritual, uh, the government before coming up with an address must have had a thorough ret ret retrospection of what had gone wrong and what they intend to do sector by sector segment by segment to address their, the fears of Nigerians. But as we speak today, just like most have read in most of the commentaries from various ethnic nationalities and public spirited individuals, uh, there seem not to be hope for a better Nigeria uh, if we have to go by the words of Mr. President. Thank you. Well, uh, Professor Kaba, I mean, if I may play the devil's advocate, in that same speech, the president devoted, uh, you know, significant uh, amount of attention to the challenge of insecurity in Nigeria. And he talked about efforts that, uh, you know, the Nigerian government is making uh, to recruit more policemen. Only uh, a few days earlier, uh, the same government, through the NDDC, had provided a block of 64 flats through the NDDC uh, in the Niger Delta area to enhance security in the Niger Delta. And on the question of the Petroleum Industry Act that you referred to, the president also talked about it, the efforts that his administration has made uh, to amend certain sections uh, to further deepen the institutional and regulatory framework of the, the uh, new dispensation. And yet here you are, you are saying that uh, the interests of uh, the Niger Delta South South has not been met. We've been on this since the Willings Commission in 1958, uh, 1959, do you expect the president of Nigeria to resolve all those issues uh, contemporaneously uh, con in, 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 at this time uh, by uh, <laughs> through just one speech? I thought the president gave some assurance. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, it is also very good to refer to the Winston Commission. And uh, you will recall if you have read that report, uh, that uh, the, the, the call for resource control was key, and the call for, for restructuring was also key. So what we had expected, whether going by even the, uh, the various uh, revenue allocation formula, formula in, this, in this nation, uh, from 100% to 50% uh, when oil became uh, the discovered commercial quantity. They ride them, we started had a, 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 a representation uh, to, to 1.3 to 1.5 down to 
and uh, we're talking about this. We expected a progression. Remember, we had a 2014 National Confab where, where there were agreements as to at least a 50%, 50% resource control. So what we say in essence is that anything that, is, that does not address that, address that. We're not saying you should give us all at the same time, but there must be systematic progress. Now, when you talk about insecurity, the issue of building police stations and having even police stations everywhere and all that, that is not the issue. There are more fundamental issues that have to do with even the attitude of the police officers, their welfare, the welfare of the police officers, and community policing that has, has advocated at advocated at their comfort. So, so, so we are saying, yes, you've mentioned them, but they are not satisfactory. That is the question. We were mentioned, but the, as far as we are concerned, we wanted the president to be more emphatic on up, uplifting the, 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 the three percent he has just mentioned about. Well, uh, Professor Kava, another issue that the president addressed there is the issue of unity and the efforts being made by the present administration to make sure that certain identified financiers of agitators and, you know, those uh, preaching secession are brought to book. Uh, they are tracked down. Uh, but he made the point that, look, Nigeria is a unified country and that the unity of Nigeria, as stated in the Constitution, is not negotiable. Is there a position on that by the Ijo National Congress, which you lead? Yeah, okay. Uh, all along the Ijo Nation, like we have said earlier, believes in a united Nigeria. And that is why when uh, our territory was even, uh, do we say, uh, made part of some secessionist agenda. We came up to say that the John Nation is not part of any of those secessionist agenda. We believe in a united nation, Nigeria, as we speak. Uh, we also give conditions, conditions for our commi continuous commitment to the, to, to the Nigerian project. Uh, part of these conditions, uh, we talked about restructuring, we talked about resource justice, we talk about uh, additional states so that uh, our brothers and sisters that are so balkanized in places like Edo State, uh, where we, we uh, will have a sense of belonging as people uh, 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 equals of this, of this country. Now, uh, yes, I heard about, I read about uh, the mention of uh, identifying sponsors and no sponsors and all that. I think we should deal with the root causes of these call for secession, rather than deal with the, 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 the symptoms. Uh, the critical point to note, the critical point to note is that, is a question to ask is, what is the reason behind the call for secession? And you see that there is common, something common in all the calls. The, the fear or clear fear of, of marginalization, the issues of injustice, equity. And uh, I listened to Abdul Salam about two days ago, uh, two days before the Independence Day. And he was very categorical and clear that Nigerians Nigerians today are calling for secession. Nigerians are not happy with the current system of, and that let those who are corridors of power enthrone justice and equity. And these are, these are not just, it's not just rhetorical. You have to look at, for instance, is there equity in this country in terms of appointments? Is there equity? take up the NNPC and look at the directors. Where are they from? Does it be a, a, a true color 
or a character, a federal character of this country. Look at the service chiefs. Where are they from? Look at the infrastructure. Where are they from? Where are they positioned? Is there justice in this country? Are people treated equally? Why is the oil in the Niger Delta, in Ijoland, the property of everybody? And the gold in Zamfara and other places, the property of few persons. Why do you have two sets of laws? Why are people treated so badly? So why is there no inclusion? Then you can put this all in the scale. So rather than looking for those who are sponsoring, I think the government should spend more time addressing the reasons why even people are sponsoring. Because if, if you address the reasons satisfactorily, these movements will lack sponsors. And that is the solution to the problem. And when you talk about identify, look, the, the National Assembly has called on seeing the bandits as terrorists. We expected, we expected something in that direction because the National Assembly is a representation of the entire country. So why are some persons pampered and some other persons treated with with, 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 with the severity of the law. So, for me, identifying the brains behind the sponsors, because at every point in time they will sponsor, and let, let us just remind ourselves, before Ken Sarurua died, he made a statement, yeah, yes, I am speaking for justice, I'm dying for justice, and that even when I die, many more persons will come calling for justice. So justice is like a floater. You don't kill it. You don't bury it. You can try to suppress it, but at, at, the, at the appropriate time, it will submerge. So the advice to government is to stop pursuing symptoms. They should go for the real kill. Deal with issues. Let all Nigerians have a sense of belonging. There shouldn't be a discrimination against anybody in this country. If you are fit for a position, have it. Not because you are part of a particular point, a place of this country, you are belong to a particular religion. If you, are, if, you are, if you are qualified for an appointment, let it be so, so given, irrespective of where you come from. That is the foundation. That, in fact, that is the basis upon which we're talking, appreciate unity in diversity. Unity in diversity by the founding fathers of this country. We have derailed so much to the extent that that, like the president said, the, the difficulties and challenges we face in this country are only comparable, comparable to those difficulties we've had during the 30 years, 30 months uh, uh, civil war. In fact, in, in our own calculation, the, ma the number of persons are killed on a daily basis by the activities of bandits, kidnappers, and all that. If properly calculated, will outnumber those that died during the civil war. Those displayed, those chased out of their homes, those chased everywhere. So in fact, Nigeria is like in a worse situation against its own self. Thank you. Well, I mean, uh, Professor Kaba, I understand where you're coming from. As president of Ijo National Congress, uh, you are really concerned about the Nigerian estate. But when we talk about Nigeria at 61, there are some people who say that, look, whatever may have been the challenges since 1960, there is a lot to celebrate. There is a lot uh, to be uh, you know, happy about. The president himself talked about the unified country that the British handed over to us. Some other commentators have talked about the resilience of the average Nigerian and how Nigerians have distinguished themselves uh, in different fields of human endeavor. Uh, are there some positive things that you think we should really be celebrating as Nigeria marks sister first in the well, uh, Yeah, I agree. I agree with. Uh, I agree with. Yeah, I think I agree with you uh, that uh, at least, in spite of all the odds, uh, we should thank God that we are together. We are to our life. We are together. Uh, we are in one piece and not in pieces. Uh, then beyond that, uh, I will ask what are we celebrating? Is it the devaluation of our Naira now? 
500 600 to one dollar. Is that what you want to celebrate? Is that what you want to celebrate the depreciation of the sanctity for human life? Yes. Uh, yes, we've seen growth. Growth without development, there's no doubt about that. But I want to believe that in as much as we are alive, in as much as we are also talking, we also want to plead with the government to be sensitive to the mood of the people, to be sensitive to the calls of the people for justice. And I can show you that Nigerians are people who get satisfied when little things have been done. If, for instance, he has come up with some policies to even alleviate, to, to encourage Nigerians in practical terms, issues of justice, issues, issues of justice, issues of equity, I think Nigerians can really come up. It's true that Nigerians are very resilient. Yes, uh, what is happening to us and what we have endured so far will have broken so many countries apart in those days. But the government should not take, take advantage of that resilience, of that, this, the, 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 the quietness of Nigerians. Because we might just be sitting on incombustible uh, uh, pipe that we, yes, that might just explode one day. So the best thing is to begin to, as we speak, because the essence of a media shot of this nation is to get the feedback and let this, as Nigeria speak, let the government take note of all of this. We believe we love Nigeria and that's why we are speaking. But take note of the issues we are raising. We want a peaceful country. We want a country where everybody can say this is my country. We don't want a nation where some people claim superiority over other people. Let meritocracy, let meritocracy prevail. Let some level of fairness and equity and representation at all point in time prevail. And I can assure you, if we have a semblance of, of any of this, let us see a reduction in the number of people that die on a daily basis in their homes and their highways. In fact, a situation where where the military can, uh, sorry, bandits can even go to the headquarters, defense headquarters. So who is safe in this country? It is pathetic. And please, this uh, gloom should be transmitted to the, to the president. This is the fear. The, the, I am expressing the fear of the job people. I'm expressing the fears that if we go this way, we are not too sure of tomorrow. Thank you. Well, Prof, uh, finally, before you go, let's take uh, something that is very topical. This whole conversation about the turning point that awaits Nigeria in 2023 and whether or not the presidency should come to the south or go to any other part of the country. And, you know, northern governors are now saying, and also the Northern Elders Forum, saying that, well, what those groups object to is uh, southern governors and people of the south saying that the presidency must come uh, to the South in 2023. They object to the use of the word must. Is there, you know, a position by the Ijo National Congress in this regard? And what has been the response of your body uh, to the clarification that, uh, you know, the, what the North really wants is a negotiation of what happens going forward? Briefly. Okay, uh, uh, yes, uh, going forward, uh, maybe before I address the issue of the of 2023, let me use this opportunity to address something very cardinal. Um, I was talking about a call by some others for the relocation of the uh, Nigerian Content Board uh, uh, as outside Bayasa, uh, given reasons of insecurity. And uh, I just want to use the opportunity to say that uh, we, we see that call as very wicked. Uh, unacceptable to our people. Uh, we are not going to fall to that blackmail. The same persons we have identified as having destroyed Sapele, destroyed Wari with this ship propaganda. There is no part of this country that is safe. There is no part of this country that is too safe, that is safer than the other place. 
So please, the end, they should leave the national, the uh, Nigeria Content Board headquarters alone in Yanagua. At this point, we are calling on the headquarters, uh, with all the IOUs to, to relocate their headquarters, the Niger Delta, for the purpose of sustainable peace and development. Now back to the issue of uh, 2003, uh, 23 elections and all that. Yes, um, our position had been for, that's for purpose of equity and fairness, uh, everybody should be taken along. And uh, if the North has taken position for eight years, it's only normal. Normal to say, okay, let it go to the South. So if the Northern governors are objecting, what else do they want to give to the people? Do you want to have eight years and have another eight years, 16 years? Is this, are we slaves to anybody? I think they, 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 we, we stand with Pandev. We, ta we stand with uh, other, other ethnic nationalities. We stand with all ethnic nationalities in solidarity to say that let the power shift to the southern part of this country. That is the only way. That is another way of guaranteeing justice and peace. Remember, most of the agitations are from this side. And the issues... Uh, 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 they all border on the question of marginalization, of, of a skewed political process, uh, system that favors one part of the country at the detriment of the other. So why not balance it up? Eight years, I think, is enough. Let them hand it over. Let us also try it up from this way. That is the position of the Joe National Congress. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, President of the Joe National Congress, Professor Benjamin Okaba, thank you very much indeed.